Hey Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It is Biff and welcome to a new day in the Fearless Mods paint booth garage. Today we are jumping into the STI after we have let the paint set overnight. And, uh, and so I think we're going to cut and start slapping some stuff together until it cools down a little bit. And then maybe um, think about pulling it out of here and get some things set up for our next phase of painting which is front bumper, rear bumper, hood scoop, antenna, door handles, fuel filler door, um, license plate uh, cover, and oh spoiler, that'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned as we get ready to jump into this on another day of working on the STI. Stuff like that that takes forever. Hunting for a dropped screw in the bowels of the STI. Okay, we're gonna see if we can get this, uh, get these in here and show you how to put in these springs. Um, Cause they can be a little tricky. So this side ends up with the uh, just a little simple loop like this comes across and the difference is, is the right side comes down like this. It doesn't have a, a complete S. It just kind of comes down and makes like a P. And then this scoops towards the hinge. So let's see what we got here. So I'm going to put this end in here like this. Stick it in the slot and it bottoms out. Okay. Now that leaves us with this side. If I could get this up in here, all I gotta do is rotate it. There we go. All right, so it is in there. All we gotta do is get it rotated down and put that on it. Okay, there we go. Everything's seated and it's up in there. That one has tension. This one's still loose. This one's got the tension bar on it, so it's good. And keep in mind, these tension bars are different depending on whether you're doing a, uh, whether you have the big spoiler, uh, STI spoiler or not, because it's heavier. And so these have a whole lot more tension. This one, which has the, the uh, S-curve on this end, and it will slip in there very similarly. And then I'll get this one in on the right side, up in the notches, and then all we gotta do is pry it and get it in. They're crisscrossing here in the middle, and that's where you can tell when things are, if it's going right or wrong. So right in here, you can see the crisscross where they overlap. If they're in there right, they'll separate as you, as you put the tension on them. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this right one back off again, take it out and cross it over right here and then try it again. Over like that. Put you in the left side like that. That looks better. Yeah, that looks better. All right. So you can see now, even though I crossed them over they're much more parallel and separate here, and they actually do the cross right here. Okay. So we got that in there, that over here, the right side here. Let's see if that helps any. Probably not, but what the heck. Give it a try. That's my thumb. I think it's in there. This one's in, no clunking. Okay, they're in, and the hinges are just loose so that I can adjust the deck lid, but they are in. There's the setup on the left. This is the, the right one that the S-curve goes in the flat here. Comes across into the front groove. Stays in front until over here, and then that's where it crisscrosses and goes back to the back and becomes the, the pushing point for this lever. And then this one, same kind of deal, goes into the slot, comes across underneath, goes through the back, 
and then over into the slots here to come down and be this pusher rod. All right, so on this, there's a, uh, like a, where it was split or bonded together to make it a loop. This one has a little arrow on it, but that one's gonna go right here in the middle on the back. It's another new day in the garage here, and uh, I've gone ahead and got the seals in here and the uh, the jams, if you will, the, the, the sills at the bottom, the S-E-A-L-S and the S-I-L-L-S down here at the bottom. Um, I've got the hinges already matched up and attached to the doors. I've put some of the rubber gasketing on the doors that, that go into the seals. And uh, except for the top portion, they're just loosely on there because I am going to have to peel those down and tape that up so I can get some spray on the inner edge of the window rail. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring out the doors now and start getting those installed. And then we'll get some fenders on. And I think it will be time to start thinking about getting it down on the ground and getting some sanding done on some of the other components so we can get ready to paint. Okay, the doors are hung. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of final adjustment later on. The back one looks really nice. It's got a good gap. Um, through the center doesn't look too bad and uh, we'll see how the front is once I put the fender on but uh, this rear striker plate is raising the door just slightly when I shut it and so I believe that's gonna require just a little bit of a two-person job here make sure that I can get the uh, the rear end of the door lifted up while I'm working on these hinges it's hard to do it with one person in a jack so Probably a little bit of two-person adjustment there to fine-tune it later on, but this is going to be good enough to get it um, finished off and taped up and, uh, and sanded and everything. Yeah, that one's lining up a little better than the other side. That one was a little more of a challenge. So uh, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fenders. At least we got it, so now it's fender time. One thing I gotta do here that I never did before is uh, when I put in this, this front upper frame rail here, I never did attach this little piece here. I never had it, so I fabricated one, but I've still got to weld it on. Brackets on there, so now it's time to uh, go ahead and once again put the fender on. All right, so fenders are on. So next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop on a little more of the hardware in the doors. Uh, probably going to be about it for tonight. All right, so once we got this harness back in here and everything mounted up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, door stops back in there that uh, keep it from opening too far. And then I am going to um, feed the harness through and snap all the different connectors back into place, at least the ones I can do right now before I finish with the door panel. Alright guys, we're going to call that a wrap for another night. I'm kind of delaying on the hood right now, trying to decide how I want to handle that and the trunk. Even without those two pieces, I can go ahead and roll it out into the driveway and then go ahead and start um, sanding up all the little pieces. Check it out. I got Fearless Mods merch. Not for sale, but I'm sporting it. Check it out. I got all the colors of the Fearless Mods STI, including the latest blue and there we go. I got the wheels on the car, pulled it out. I have not put the hood in the trunk on yet because 
at least for the, the trunk, I wanna paint the bolts that go into the hinges there. I went ahead and swept out the garage just kind of briefly. I'll have to do it again after I'm done sanding and before we get ready to paint. So what I'm doing right now is just gonna set up some stands, start bringing some pieces out here and sanding. All right guys, I wanna take just a second to explain to you how I'm going about this uh, sanding here. So there's obviously part of this rear bumper that is um, you know, unfinished plastic, if you will. And so I'm gonna to need to tape that off to paint, but I'm also gonna to need to tape it off to sand. This little inner edge right here, I haven't sanded because I didn't wanna be rubbing all up against this with the sandpaper and giving it a dull scuffed look. Um, so I just sanded the flat surface next to it without touching it. Now I'll come in here and tape it off so that it allows me to go ahead and get into my sandpaper and get that little edge so the paint will stick into it. The front bumper took a lot of sanding because it has been raw plastic for the, the year plus that I've been driving it. And raw plastic isn't protected against the elements. Probably not a good way to run it, but you know, it allowed me to daily it. So, um, and it also is much more susceptible to little nicks and things from rocks. So. I sanded most of them out. There'll be a couple in here I'm not gonna worry about um, going in and filling all that stuff up. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and paint over it and let the sealer and everything else kind of fill in. So anyway, that's the progress right now. Almost three of the main big pieces. The last side skirt will be the fourth large piece. And then I think we're mostly looking at um, small pieces. You wanna know how to get your uh, mirrors apart on your WRX or your STI. Um, I've just removed the three bolts from inside the door and was able to pull it out. Now I'm working, there's three parts here since there's the top shell which is painted, there's the bottom shell which isn't, and there's the front piece that houses the mirror. And actually the fourth piece is this, uh, the, the, the mount. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this bottom unpainted piece first. So I've got the mount facing towards me and the mirror blinker facing out and I'm just going to get in here with a, a uh, plastic tool create a little bit of space right there so I can get a big one in there that I can pry with and then I'm going to try to pry outward straight back because you can see that's the direction that all these little tangs here are pointing they're all pointing uh, straight up for you, which is straight back for the pole. So as long as you pry that straight back, that'll pop straight off like that. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking out some of the, the other components, such as the blinker. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this, uh, this little rubber gasket here and just slide it back. It'll expose these screws inside here, um, four of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. And my plan, by the way, is to paint the entire thing um, so that's why I'm kind of separating the pieces so I can get paint in there around to the spots where it swivels. The metal piece would come out but so will this and they just come back a little bit so I'm just going to pull them back here a little ways. So I'm just going to get in there with a little bit of a pry tool and start popping it a little bit on the bottom and then just pop straight off the top and again that one same thing. All of the tabs point straight up, which means it's a straight back pull. So as long as you're prying straight back, you shouldn't damage any of those. One last screw under here for the indicator light. So essentially, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, I'm not going to pull the mirror out because the extra bit of paint you're able to get in there isn't really worth it to me. I'm just going to flatten it out and center it up. This side's got a big hole in it anyways but I will just tape the mirror. So all I gotta do is sand up all these pieces and arrange them so that I can paint them and they'll be good to go. All right guys, one of the things I forgot when I was uh, going through all the pieces is number 16. Sweet 16 and it's the spoiler. So I brought it out. 
um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in it in the lineup for sanding and um, I'm gonna be starting to uh, put together the paint booth so that I can get the airflow going and start sucking out any bugs that might be coming in now that it's dark and the lights are on. And again, another raw plastic piece that has been on here and it has had the tape marks on it since I bought it, pulled the tape off and slapped it on here. Um, so we're gonna take it apart so that I can get better angles for painting in these hard to get areas. Okay, so I think I have a plan. Here's the mirror shooting station with the bolts that I'll hit. I'm gonna hang the ends of the spoiler up here. This spoiler is gonna be dangling with this in the center groove there because that allows me to get up under there and shoot from both sides in that area. I'm not concerned about having coverage in because it gets the cap on it. That allows me to shoot under and over. Here's the front bumper and the other side skirt, hood scoop, license plate, and the two little uh, fender covers. I'm trying to get enough spread where I'm not just blasting overspray on everything around the stuff that I happen to be painting at the time. The paint booth is set up, so we're sucking air out. Um, and as I did last time, I will wet the floor before we do the paint. All right, everything is wax and grease removed, so now it is going to be a matter of tack clothing and taping some things down so they don't move when I spray them. All right, we have washed and sanded and degreased and tack cloth and the floor is wet. So the first thing we will do is I'm going to use some adhesion promoter on the bare pieces of plastic, the front bumper and the spoiler parts, uh, and some of the mirror parts probably. And then I'm going to go with the uh, sealer coat on the plastic pieces. So this is the, uh, the sealer that I'm going to put on the raw plastic parts. Um, it's a chroma base four to one, so kind of like our nascent clear coat. We got four to one and we got an activator here. Um, so this thing had been sitting for a, a couple weeks, so I'm stirring it up real good. Uh, it was a little thick in the bottom, but now it seems to be nice and, uh, and running. I'm going to use a smaller cup. I don't want to mix it in my clear cup and I don't want to mix it in my blue cup. So, um, that I'm planning on using, so I'm just using it in one of these smaller ones. I'm going to put eight ounces of this uh, sealer in it, and I'm going to put two ounces of activator. And that is my four to one. Four times two is eight. And I got the dark gray because uh, I'm going on with that dark, with that dark blue. And so, uh, just like when we put the primer on the uh, quarter panel. I just want to make sure that the lighter colors are covered. So I've got the air compressor out there, which is running, set at 40 PSI, with the losses through the hose and everything. At my regulator here, it ends up being about 35 PSI at the gun, and uh, at 40 PSI at the compressor, it should be good to go. So let's go ahead and try out some sealers. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean the gun and get ready for base coat. I consolidated the two new quarts of blue with a little bit that I had left over and mixed it all up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mix and it's one to one. So I'm gonna do 10 ounces and 10 ounces to get 20. All right, this is big guys. We are getting ready to put down our first coats of the Lapis Blue Pearl on parts of the body that are gonna be seen, the show pieces. I'm nervous, oh yeah, boy, it's late. It's late and I don't wanna rush this, so just gotta buckle in and realize that I'm gonna be tired tomorrow. That's 
first coat, front bumper is out. No front bumper, big spills, bad news. You have to sand that and, and go at it again later. Time has come to slick it in. So same gotchas, got to make sure that it's not leaking out the top. Check our spray. Alright guys, I think that's it, but the camera shut off, so I'll catch up to speed here after I clean up the gun and let you know where the tricky parts were, where the successes were, and where the failures were. Alright guys, it is clean up time, it is friggin' late, once again it's tomorrow, let me walk you through. Not as pleased tonight. Though I probably should be because there are some beautiful blue parts in this garage right now. Um, man, it's going to be hard to see because the light's right behind there, but these just look fantastic. The, uh, the mirror turned out quite nice. From what I can tell, the spoiler looks nice and glossy. You probably saw it take a spill. Almost, thankfully I caught it in a spot right there, got up against this pad and left some dust on it and I just cleared it in. So, it's in a spot you're not going to see it. Uh, this is looking nice. There's a lot more trash and everything tonight and I'm not sure why. I'm guessing I didn't have the garage quite as clean this time, but you can see the trash in that. That one's pretty bad. It's lower to the ground. Maybe that's kind of part of it too, getting kicked up. Some of the other ones aren't too bad. The uh, bumper looked pretty good. Here's one of the things with the uh, with all the plastic parts. The bumper, um, honestly, both bumpers and uh, and definitely the the spoiler. Um, man, they had a lot of static electricity in them. When I would um, was wiping them down, you could just hear them popping and snapping the whole time my hand was going across it. And then the first thing I started to notice was my arm hairs sticking to it. So uh, any dust or anything that got near it was just going to stick to it. And it had a, a, an attraction for that crap. And, and that was uh, probably a large part of the problem with those parts. There were bugs, more bugs tonight than previously. But you can see like there's, a, there's some kind of like a little hair that got in there. Um, in clear coat, there's a bug. That I painted in over here, clear coated in. There's, uh, I know there's a hair over here on the, the bumper hanging out right there that might be on the surface and I might be able to grab that off, but um, yeah. So that was one problem. The other problem was I was getting overzealous with the first coat of clear and I'm in the dark side here, so it's gonna be hard to see, but there are some runs um, on this end for this one and then this one pretty bad on this end run 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 away and and then a little droopiness up in here too so yeah i started to notice it and get concerned but it was too late the actual the orange peel looks pretty freaking sweet look at that reflection if it weren't for all the trash that was in it that would be so fantastic um as it is with it being my first garage paint job, I think I'm going to be super pleased with it. The one thing I was not pleased with happened right out the gate. Top of the paint can just decided to shit itself all over my bumper as I reached over to get to the spoiler. I was in a panic. I'm like, well, I can paint over it just like I did in the door jams and, and it won't be real noticeable. Or, you know, it'll kind of self-level. Or I can wipe it off real quick and it'll be okay. 
none of those are going to be okay. And uh, even though I was tired, a cooler head prevailed. And so I did not do any of those things. The best thing to do is going to be to just let it set here, dry, hit it with some sandpaper again, hit it with another coat of, uh, of sealer, and then go at it with the paint. That's the best solution. Another crazy long day to get this one across the line, but uh, we're inching closer. All right, guys, it's the next day. Actually, it's still kind of the same day, just later in it. And uh, I always love it when the sun's shining in here in the afternoon on these colors. Look at that. That lapis blue looks incredible. So aside from the mistakes we talked about, this stuff is looking fantastic. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start putting some of it together. Okay, so I'm also gonna do something that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. Probably one of the first pieces I bought when I bought the uh, the car, or at least whenever I got the, the new fenders, the red one, and that is to put the proper logo on it so that I'm not running WRX on one side and STI on the other. There we go, two of them. She's finally got a matching pair. she is with her fifth color slowly coming together all right guys that's all we are going to do today um i was up way early this morning and i feel like getting some dinner and some rest tonight so uh, i just wanted to get all this assembled so that we can get ready to start sanding the uh the body and kind of uh just put some of the uh, other things together like the spoiler and the mirrors so everything's looking fantastic. Uh, I definitely see things on there that I would do differently. Uh, and I will run through those probably in the last episode when we finish the paint job, just because I want to be able to, I want you guys to be able to learn from this. The whole deal with my channel is I don't want to just fast motion everything and just blast past it all. I want you to be able to learn from my mistakes so that if you want to try to tackle something like this, you can change things a little bit and make it better. So I'll try to go through all of those at a later time, but that's going to be a wrap for this episode of adding blue to the STI. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and share this with your friends, man. All right, you take care. We'll see you again real soon.